foundation of this building, penetrate the soil, join with the roots of the trees, go deep, go down, go deep, underground. Dance with the roots. Feel supported by the soil. Let yourself touch groundwater and be refreshed. Go deep. Go down. Go deep. Go down. Rooted firmly in the earth, take a deep breath and let the air surround you. Reach up through the ceiling, up beyond the roof. Let your awareness mingle with the leaves on the trees in the very top, in the very top. Go up, go up, touch the clouds and be refreshed. Go up, go up, penetrate the light blue of the sky. Go up, go up, reach up, reach up, move among the stars, circle the planets and keep reaching until you reach the deep, deep blue space. From that place, look out and see this beautiful planet of ours. Allow stardust to surround you. Allow stardust to fall down, 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 down through the deep, deep blue of space, past the planets, past the stars. Feel that starlight falling down through the clouds, through the roof of this building, through the ceiling, and feel it. Feel that stardust sprinkling all over you saturating your hair, being drawn in by your skin, flowing with the blood in your veins, cleansing your internal organs, soothing your nerves, polishing your bones. Feel the energy of the earth, 
and the energy of the heavens meeting in your heart and moving out, 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 so that it touches the person next to you on either side, so that it touches the person behind you and the one in front of you, so that it touches those who are way, way back in the back of this room, so that it touches those who walk through this hotel, this area, this town, this state, this region, this continent. Stretch out, 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 down, and out, up, and out. Make contact with everyone in this hemisphere. And don't stop there. Reach across the water and feel. Feel your kindred in the other hemisphere. Reach out, reach up. See yourself standing, sitting, lying, walking, dancing. global village on your home planet earth with your kindred the rocks the bugs the birds the beasts the trees We are all kindred spirits dancing, praying, working, loving, living, enjoying life here in the global village. Take a deep breath. Gently open your eyes and look at the person to your left and the person to your right. And say, hello. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> Welcome home. My name is Louisa Tisch, and I am going to be one of several MCs uh, tonight who are going to take you through what promises to be an amazing evening. I've been with the Institute of Noetic Sciences since dust first settled, and, <laughs> and there's never been a time when there was not an amazing evening. So I'm going to surrender the stage for a moment now and turn it over to, where's Emmanuel? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Good evening. And welcome to the 16th International Conference of the Institute of Noetic Sciences. And welcome. Welcome to this conference, which promises to be a really amazing experience, a journey into the science of being and the spirit of community. So we might ask, what is the science of being? We're here. We exist. But where did we come from? Material science would have us believe that we randomly evolved out of the material universe. But we know 
here tonight that that's really not the case. Philosophers throughout the ages and more recently in these last several hundred years of the materialistic science paradigm have asked what they call the hard problem. How did consciousness come out of matter? It was Peter Russell who I think best phrased this hard problem question when he said, how does something as immaterial as consciousness ever arise out of something as unconscious as matter? Good question. The answer is it doesn't. Never did, never will, it couldn't have happened. In fact, at the beginning of our universe, everything was so finely tuned that there's just no other way that we can look at this other than to believe there was some kind of true spirit and intelligence behind it all. Cosmologist Lee Smolin once said, the chances of consciousness arising out of the material universe are 1 in 10 to the 220th power. That's one out of the number of all the atoms there are in the universe. So the chances are slim. (laughs) Physicist and mathematician Sir Fred Hoyle put it more graphically when he said, the chances of consciousness arising out of the material universe by accident are the same as if a hurricane passed through a junkyard and in the whirling mass constructed an operating aircraft. (laughs) So yes, we, we understand that consciousness came first. That is our belief here. That is what the Institute of Noetic Sciences is boldly trying to demonstrate to the scientific community. But you know, this isn't a brand new idea. It goes way back. Plato, two and a half millennia ago, said the universe is a single living conscious being that encompasses all the other living creatures within it. Plato. In more modern times, Deepak Chopra has recently said there is every reason to accept that the universe is a living, conscious, evolving, and creative being. There we have it. It is a living, evolving, conscious being. And the Institute of Noetic Sciences is doing all they can to demonstrate that and to solve our hard problem once and for all, to move the search for consciousness into the forefront of scientific research. And thus we would see that the science of being is not something going on clandestinely behind closed doors in Petaluma, California. It is not only the forefront of science itself, it's the study of the whole universe, who we are, how we got here, and what we're doing together. And that builds the spirit of community. If we ask, well, what is consciousness? We might say, well, it was a primordial field of awareness. And it evolved, and then we became aware of being aware in Homo sapiens sapiens. But we're now ready for a new revolution in consciousness, a great quantum leap that is happening before our very eyes. And that is we're aware that we're aware and we're aware of that, that we can interact with that consciousness, use it, better understand it, develop it, work together and co-create a new bright reality for for humanity as a whole. It's nothing less than that. It's a revolution in consciousness, a revolution in science, the leading edge that will carry us onward into the 21st century 
to help us better understand not only our origins, how the universe works, and where it goes from here. Over the course of the next four days, you will be awesomely entertained, perhaps slightly surprised, and certainly thrilled to hear the messages of our presenters on the nature of consciousness, how it works, and really above all, how we work together. How we, you, all of us together create this spirit of community, a spirit that will carry on and move us forward in these challenging times that we face. So that's what the science of being and the spirit of community is all about. And let's get the show on the road. I'd like to play, pay special tribute to the man who started all of this. Apollo 14 astronaut Edgar Mitchell, one of eight human beings to have traveled as far as he did from the Earth and walked on the moon. And as he returned to Earth and he looked out and he saw our beautiful planet floating in space, he had a vision. He knew all was one. He knew consciousness came first and he wanted to do something about it. He created the Institute of Noetic Sciences in 1973 as a tribute to his inspiration and his way to contribute back to the spirit of community. He can't be with us here tonight. I guess if we've traveled as far as the moon, it gets kind of nice to spend more time at home these days. <laughs> But he's with us in heart and spirit and love. And we welcome, thank Edgar for all he's done to create the Institute. And let's take a look at his video message. Thank you. My name is Edgar Michael, founder of the Institute of Nordic Sciences. And thank you for joining us in this conference and being with us today. Let's go back to the 15th century when the great thinker René Descartes said that body, mind, physicality, spirituality were different realms of reality that didn't interact. That wasn't quite correct, and we've lived with it for some 400 years till the end of the 19th century, when Max Planck and Einstein set up the framework for quantum mechanics to start being understood in the 20th century. And the reason that's important is because our deeper mental experiences and psychic stuff comes out of quantum mechanics, and that wasn't really formulated until the 1920s. And it's taken all the 20th century and into the 21st century for us to really realize that. And that's where we are today, is that the Institute of Nordic Sciences has been bringing the science of awareness, which is a foundation block for consciousness studies and all sorts of living systems. Whereas for 400 years, we thought we could answer most of the world's cosmological questions with just matter and energy. But now we understand matter, energy, and awareness as the founding blocks of what this universe that we live in is all about. As I was coming back from the moon and coming back home and having a picture of Earth in the heavens was a powerful experience. It's the type of experience where you see the inner connectedness of all things. And the Greek in the Greek language is called metanoia. In the Buddhist language it's called satori or enlightenment. But in the Sanskrit it was called Salvakapa Samadhi, which is, is a means of asking this question about uh, the very deep essence of what we're looking at. And that was the experience I had in looking at Earth from space uh, coming home from the moon as well. Wow. We're just another little planet in a huge, huge cosmology of planets and stars and star systems. We're appearing now to understand ourselves as just one grain of sand on a huge beach that consists of all living things and the universe itself. Thank you for joining us in this important work.